Welcome to the 2022 ASEAN Media Partners Forum. My name is Lu Xin. I'm host of uh, the opinion show called The Point with Lu Xin on CGTN. I'm extremely pleased to be joining you here to be hosting this forum in Guangxi Zhuang Autonomous Region and in the regional capital of Nanning. This is a beautiful green city. Now, the theme of this year's forum is intelligence, collaboration, and cohesion. It is jointly hosted by the China Media Group and the People's Government of the Guangxi Zhuang Autonomous Region. We are honored to be joined not only by distinguished guests and experts from here in China, but also from ASEAN countries, including those from Cambodia, the Philippines, Thailand, and Laos. We also have senior representatives of regional media organizations who will be sharing with us their valuable insights. The warmest welcome to all our distinguished guests and speakers and to all of you watching us online and on site. First, let's hear from His Excellency, Mr. Chen De Hai, who is Secretary General of the ASEAN China Center. What have been the outcomes of bilateral media cooperation over the past year? And what has this growing partnership meant for media on both sides? Let's take a listen. Distinguished guests, friends from ASEAN and the Chinese media, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. It gives me great pleasure to join you at the 2022 ASEAN Media Partners Forum. On behalf of the ASEAN China Center, I wish to express my sincere thanks to our host for the kind invitation and congratulations on the successful convening of the forum. In July last year, we gathered in Beijing to launch the ASEAN Partners Mechanism in a bid to pool our wisdom on promoting regional development. Over the past year, ASEAN-China relations have been enhanced and upgraded with fruitful outcomes in various fields, contributing even more positive energy to regional and global development. The two sides have announced the establishment of the ASEAN-China Comprehensive Strategic Partnership, marking a new milestone in the history of ASEAN-China relations. We have jointly promoted the implementation of the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership and have become each other's biggest trading partner, enjoying a vast prospect of economic and trade cooperation. We have also strengthened cooperation in health and medical care, setting a fine example for the world in jointly fighting COVID-19. Under the Belt and Road Initiative, we have made major progress in its high-quality development, bringing tangible developments to the people in our region. We have jointly carried out a series of programs under the framework of the ASEAN-China Year of Sustainable Development Cooperation, with a number of new highlights in green development, response to climate change, ecological conservation, and environmental protection. We keep deepening people-to-people -people exchanges in media, think tanks, education, sports, and other areas, and continue to enhance mutual understanding and friendship between our peoples. Dear friends, the ASEAN-China Comprehensive Strategic Partnership has got off to a good start. That is the result of joint efforts made by all stakeholders, including ASEAN and the Chinese media. And this growing partnership has in return brought more cooperation opportunities to media on both sides. ASEAN and the Chinese media shoulder great responsibilities in enhancing mutual trust and cooperation and promoting regional development. Our media should focus on the theme of ASEAN-China friendly cooperation, promote media industrial cooperation by making full use of the existing mechanisms, and promote the narrative of ASEAN-China common development, so as to create a favorable social and public opinion environment for closer regional collaboration and make the voice of Asia clearly heard by the world. This year's forum is themed Intelligence, Collaboration, Cohesion, which is highly relevant to the trend of the times and reflects the common aspirations of all participants. I look forward to the cordial discussions infused with the great insight and input of ASEAN and Chinese media friends, which I believe will lead to closer media cooperation and greater regional prosperity and development. Many thanks to Mr. Chinda Hai. Next, we'll hear from Dr. Javad Motagi. He's Secretary General of the Asia Pacific Broadcasting Union, or ABU. Established in 1964, the union serves 250 members in over 70 countries 
with tailored capacity building in news, sports, programming, and technology. How does he assess the role of media in shaping public opinion, and how can media prepare people for future challenges? Let's listen. Honorable dignitaries and fellow keynote speakers, dear colleagues and friends from China and ASEAN countries, Allow me first to congratulate China Media Group for initiating the timely and hugely important ASEAN Media Partners Forum as part of the China-ASEAN Comprehensive Strategic Partnership. Media is the most powerful force of our times. It has unparalleled reach and immense power to influence people, crossing the borders and building bridges between nations. In today's super-connected world, media have become as essential as our daily needs. Media of today is playing an important role in creating and shaping of public opinions, thus shaping the world. But media could be used for advancing good causes, and equally it could be used to conflict, damage, and advance bad causes and intentions. It is our duty as media professionals to protect our media, to protect our media organizations, win the trust of the public, and serve them with accurate information so they can take informed decisions. More and more, providing education is our mandate and calling. We have to enlighten wide audiences how to keep safe and healthy, prepare them for future challenges such as the climate crisis, increased natural disasters, man-made conflicts, including the cyber space, food and water security crisis, poverty, and many others. Wish you fruitful discussions and forging strong partnerships. Thank you very much. Thanks to Dr. Motagi. Next. We're going to hear from His Excellency Dr. Kyukana Reed, the Information Minister of the Kingdom of Cambodia. How has China-Cambodia media cooperation developed over the past few years, and how will the cooperation evolve in the future? Let's listen in. This year, the 2022 Asian Media Partner Forum is focusing on the theme I quote, intelligence, collaboration, cohesion, end quote, to be discussed by scholars, experts, and prominent panelists, which will be the hub of experience sharing, finding possible solutions, and discovering new ways of moving forward for media cooperation between Asian and China, especially the use of media leverage to boost economic development in our region during the recovery period despite the continued presence of COVID-19. Undeniably, media is one of the key elements for social and economic development that every government can never overlook. Taking this opportunity, I would like to express my highest appreciation to for the Asian-China media cooperation, which is underlined under the work plan of Enhancing Asian-China Cooperation Through Information and Media 2018-2024, which enabled our two parties to implement many projects in order to promote friendship and not mutual understanding between our peoples, as well as enhancing friendly cooperation and interaction between the media agency of Asian and China. In relation with China's support, on behalf of the Royal Government of Cambodia, I would like to express my deepest gratitude to the government and people of the People's Republic of China 
for granting COVID-19 vaccine to the royal government of Cambodia. The generous assistance constitute a solid foundation for the royal government of Cambodia to reopen the country in all sectors. Thank you for your kind attention. Many thanks to His Excellency Dr. Kanareed. Next, we have a guest on site. I'm pleased to be joined by Mr. An Xiao Yu, Director of the Asian and African Languages Programming Center of China Media Group. He has endeavored to strengthen media cooperation and deepen people-to-people -people exchanges between China and ASEAN by promoting media corporations such as co-producing programs. Mr. An, the floor is yours. Distinguished guests from Chinese and ASEAN media, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. It is grateful to have an online dialogue with ASEAN counterparts focusing on the new prospect of China-ASEAN media cooperation. As of today, China Media Group, Asian and African Language Programming Center, has established cooperation with more than 100 ASEAN media organizations in various ways. In the speech at the ASEAN China Special Summit to commemorate the 30th anniversary of the establishment of ASEAN China dialogue relations, Chinese President Xi Jinping pointed out that China and ASEAN have explored a bright path of good neighborliness and win-win cooperation, taking strides towards building a closer community with a shared future and made important contribution to the cause of human progress. As media organizations, we are gathering here today for reaching a consensus, that is, we should promote the understanding among our people through multi-level cooperation. We should add more elements of people-to-people -people exchanges for the China-ASEAN relations and foster a solid cultural foundation for the China-ASEAN community with a shared future. What's more, we are willing to work together with our ASEAN partners for building a more peaceful, secure, prosperous, beautiful, and amicable home. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. An. My next guest is Herman Tiu Loro, President of the Philippine BRICS Strategic Studies. What are the threats and challenges facing the world seen through his perspective, and what efforts have China and ASEAN made to maintain international and regional peace and prosperity? Let's hear what he has to say. Good day, ladies and gentlemen of the win-win community of China and ASEAN. We are well aware of the challenge of our times, that is to push for Asian and global economic recovery in the post-pandemic world. But while nature's pandemic slowly lifted, new challenges, this time man-made, have also suddenly emerged a final crisis, a fi financial crisis of epic proportions and the threat of the spread of conflict and war to our home. Both pushing back against our dreams of building that peaceful, tranquil, prosperous, beautiful and friendly common home. Of all these new challenges to our dream of Asian and global peace and prosperity, the greatest threat is conflict and war that some Western quarters are aggressively pushing for by creating tension with concocted issues where there is none. This is our forum today. And it is composed of nations with the vision of peace for all mankind and for all eternity. For if peace such as this were to permanently prevail, then the words of poverty underdevelopment, ignorance will all be banished from the lexicon of humanity. 
But there are forces that would rather slash and burn that field to sow the seeds of animosity and destruction. This we gather here to ponder methods to stop. China in the past decade initiated many projects for planting the ideas and physical practice of peace through development and trade, not only highfalutin words, but actual physical practice worth hundreds of billions, if not trillions of dollars of infrastructures across the developing world to push prosperity and peace. China with other key countries established the diplomatic structures for the reorientation of geopolitics from a unipolar to a multipolar world where power would be spread more equally and not be prone to abuse by superpowers. China did all these and convinced the world that it can deliver with all our help the dream of what I call quote unquote forever peace for mankind. Media plays a primordial role in keeping this vision and belief that forever peace is possible and is already in operation as we gather and speak here today. Our gathering here initiated by the China Media Group brings together the influencers, so to speak, of our region, ASEAN and China, to work together forging cooperation agreements and mutual assistance and cooperation to facilitate the building of that peaceful and prosperous world. Many thanks to Mr. Herman Tiu Lauro. Next, we'll hear from the well-known Chinese scholar, Professor Zhang Weiwei, Dean of the China Institute of Fudan University in Shanghai. On October the 16th, the Communist Party of China will convene the much anticipated 20th National Congress in Beijing. What impact will the Congress have on China-ASEAN relations? Let's hear what he has to say. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to join you at the 2022 ASEAN Media Partners Forum. The world today is going through profound changes unseen in a century. In this age of drastic changes, Chinese and ASEAN media should strengthen exchanges and mutual understanding, build consensus, and make our voices heard so as to make our due contribution to the healthy development of China-ASEAN relations and to peace and prosperity in the region. China is ASEAN's largest trading partner, and we are all RCEP members whose interests are increasingly intertwined. As we know, the Communist Party of China is going to convene its 20th National Congress on October 16th. It will be a very important conference that has profound influence on the future of China and the future of China-ASEAN relations. As a political scientist, I want to take this opportunity to briefly introduce the Communist Party of China to you. First, the CPC is a party, but it is different from the Western political parties. Strikingly different from a Western partial interest party, the Communist Party of China is a holistic interest party that embodies the long-standing political tradition of China. Second, as international competition grows increasingly fierce, whether a country has enough capability to reform itself is essential. In a fast-changing world, all countries need to reform themselves in order to keep up with the changing times. But reform often calls for breaking the vested interests. Without a political force that represents the holistic interests of its people, it would be hard to promote the reform due to the obstruction of various vested interest groups. One key ingredient of our successful rise in the past decades is to keep on reforming to keep pace with the changing times. Third, a holistic interest party takes the holistic and long-term national interest of its people as its top priority. Its development is people-centered instead of voter-centered. The election campaigns under the Western Partial Interest Party model have become more and more about political marketing. Fourth, the CPC approach is to unite and prosper. At home, we promote national unity and work to make people better off. 
Globally, we champion mutually beneficial cooperation and promote the Belt and Road Initiative based on the principle of extensive consultation, joint contribution and shared benefits. We believe that to unite and prosper is the aspiration of not only the Chinese people, but also people of the ASEAN countries and most countries across the world. Let's work together for greater unity and prosperity and jointly build the China-ASEAN community of a shared future. Many thanks to Professor Zhang Weiwei. My next guest is from Thailand, Wisanti Sasrida, President of the Royal Thai Army Radio and Television, or Channel 5. He will elaborate on how media cooperation will contribute to building a closer China-ASEAN community with a shared future. First of all, I would like to express my appreciation and gratitude to the China Media Group's executives and staff members who show excellent sincerity, determination, and goodwill to continuously connect relationship between media organizations in ASEAN. Up to date, holding the 2022 ASEAN Media Partners Forum has taken place. It demonstrates China's determination to support significant role of media outlets in promoting ASEAN-China relationship, which we are response from attendees coming from media organizations in the ASEAN region. Roy Thai Army radio and television station from Thailand as a public television for security under supervision of the National Broadcasting and Telecommunication Commission. We are very pleased and honored to be a part of this great and valuable forum, given that it promotes media capabilities to work together on building China ASEAN community with sustainable warmth, closeness, creative training, and solidarity. On behalf of Thai Army Radio and Television Station, including television, radio, and online platforms, we promise to support, encourage, and cooperate with China Media Group and ASEAN Media Group in a bid to exchange common information, program, and comment under the theme of intelligence, collaboration, and cohesion for sustainable mutual development. Thank you. Many thanks to Mr. Wisanti Sasrida from Thailand. Next, we have another guest on site. I'm pleased to be joined by Mr. Fan Yi, who is president of the Guangxi Radio and Television. He is also the deputy director general of the publicity department of the CPC Guangxi Committee. Mr. Fan, the floor is yours. Distinguished guests, dear colleagues, good morning. It gives me great pleasure to be here at the ASEAN Media Partners Forum to share the achievements and the future of media cooperation between Guangxi and ASEAN. Guangxi and ASEAN are geographically neighboring friends and have strong cultural connections. We are close as a family. The Guangxi media and major ASEAN counterparts have been interacting with each other for a long time. We have diverse, pragmatic, and fruitful cooperations in the fields of radio, television, newspapers, magazines, and new media. We co-produce radio and television programs such as Chinese theater and Chinese animation with media organizations in Cambodia, Laos, Myanmar, and Vietnam. We also co-produce documentaries in the bilingual Chinese-Vietnamese magazine, Lotus. We set up translation workstations in many ASEAN countries and established the Guangxi Cloud ASEAN International Communication Station. We jointly organize cultural exchange activities, such as the China-Vietnam singing competition, singing friendship song, 
and the Youth Exchange Project, a tale of Lansong Mekong Twin Cities. The Guangxi media and ASEAN partners have learned from each other through a variety of cooperation. We jointly produce and disseminate a large number of works that meet the needs of the times and promote common values. From a multilateral perspective, we show the world a beautiful scene of China ASEAN good neighborliness, mutual assistance, and win-win cooperation, which promotes understanding and trust between the two sides. The frequent interactions between Guangxi media and ASEAN partners are the testimony and epitome of the close relations between China and ASEAN. Many thanks, Mr. Fan. Last but not least, I'm pleased to be joined by Chong Luo Duan Savan, Director General and Editor in Chief of uh, the Lao Press in Foreign Languages. In 2021, the railway linking southwest China's Kuming city with the Lao capital Vientiane became fully operational. What opportunities does the railway bring to bilateral media cooperation? Let's take a look. Good morning, distinguished Chinese and ASEAN delegates. First and foremost, as a representative of Lao media, I would like to express my hearty congratulations and appreciation to the China Media Group and the government of Guangxi Guang Autonomous Region for hosting the 22 ASEAN Media Partner Forum in Nanning on eve of 19 China ASEAN Expo. As we know that this year marks the 55th anniversary of ASEAN and the first year since the adoption of China ASEAN Comprehensive Strategic Partnership. The two sides have made remarkable progress in building ASEAN China community with shared future. As a result, Laos and China have been hugely successful in terms of bilateral cooperation. China has been financing for the construction and operation of railway linking Laos, capital Vientiane to Chinese city Kunming which provide Laos with more opportunities for trade and investment. The railway was officially opened on December 3, 2001, in a ceremony presided over by Lao President Thonglun Sisulit and Chinese President Xi Jinping. The landmark railway had seen Lao transform from the landlocked country to a landlink nation. I confirm believe that through constructive and thorough discussions. This forum will be productive and beneficial for all participants. Many thanks to Mr. Duan Savan. And with his uh, input, we are coming to the end of this panel discussion on the, the 2022 ASEAN Media Partners Forum. I'm sure with the inputs from everyone from China and ASEAN, as well as regional media organizations, media, from all of these countries will work together and contribute to the building of a China ASEAN community of a shared future. We wish all of us great success and hope to see you next year at the same time. With that, we come to the end of this special edition of The Point with me, Lu Xin. As always, you can follow me on Facebook and Twitter using the handle Lu Xin in Beijing. On behalf of the whole team, thank you for watching and you've got the point.